to welcome to the second part of this question and answer for your questions about national parks and wildlife in the UK. So let's continue. We've just got four more questions left. So the next question is a very good question. Can you see a national park in one day? Um, yes, definitely. So the good thing about the UK is it's a small country. So you can travel from one part to another part quite easily. Um, obviously you couldn't see everything a national park has to offer in one day, but you, you could do some good activities, see some nice places. Um, particularly, so quite a few national parks are located very close to cities, okay? So for example, um, Manchester, which is the second, second biggest city in the UK, um, Manchester on the train is about one hour on a train to the Peak District. So if you're in Manchester, you can stay in Manchester in the city, get up early in the morning, get a train to the Peak District, spend all day in the Peak District going on some walks or cycling or something like this. And well, you could camp and stay the night or you could return to Manchester in the evening. So you could do a whole day at the National Park, but go from the city to the National Park, back to the city. Another example is, um, well, in Wales, like the Brecon Beacons or Pembrokeshire Coast, are quite close to Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales. Um, again, in Scotland, in Glasgow, which is the, the second city of Scotland. Glasgow is very close to Loch Lomond National Park. It's about 45 minutes, one hour on the train. So again, you can go early in the morning, spend the whole day there and come back to the city, to Glasgow or to Manchester later in the evening. So yeah, it's definitely possible to visit a national park in one day. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, next question. Do you know of any initiatives to protect wildlife in the UK? Yes, so we have, there's a couple of organisations or charities that do work to protect, well, both nature and wildlife. Um, so we have the National Trust, which is a, a big national organization that helps protect both sort of nature and wildlife. So plants and trees, but also animals. Uh, so the National Trust is a big organization and many people volunteer for the National Trust. Uh, so maybe if an area has been damaged by flooding or ecologically damaged. People can volunteer to help and restore the area. Um, or sometimes there's work that will help help promote or protect different animals. Um, another organization or two organizations, there is the RSPCA, which is uh, the Royal Society of prevention of cruelty to animals. Um, so it's a, a charity that campaigns against people uh, being cruel to animals, cruelty to animals and like hunting or killing animals. Um, so the RSPCA and there's also the RSPCB, which is for birds, so birds, animals. They also do work, for example, if you find an animal that is injured or hurt, you can ring them and they'll tell you what to do, how to, how to help the animal. Uh, yeah, so these are some of the initiatives. Um, and also there's, uh, there are bans on most types of hunting in the UK. You can't go hunting 
sh shoot animals. Uh, so you can't do that. So yeah, there's quite a few different charities, organisations, laws and initiatives that help uh, protect animals and their environment. Um, okay, and the next question. What is the best time of year to visit the parks? That's a very good question as well. So, it depends on the park where you want to go, okay? Generally, it's best to go in the summer. Um, so like June, July, August. Um, because this is when the weather is warmer, so it's better for camping and for walking in nature. So especially um, in the south of England, because the weather is much nicer in the summer. Uh, you have nice summers in the south of England. Um, but many national parks are very beautiful in the winter. They are cold, but and sometimes there's snow, but they're very beautiful. So going to Snowdonia or the Lake District or Northumberland National Parks in the winter is really nice. Much much colder, but nice. And uh, some of the some of the national parks in Scotland in the winter, you can go skiing. So if there's enough snow, you can go skiing. Um, one thing about Scotland is it is best to avoid the national parks. So don't go to the national parks in the middle of the summer. So July and August is bad because there are a lot of insects called midges. They're a bit like mosquitoes, and they bite you. And they bite, they bite your skin. Uh, and this is especially bad in Scotland in the summer. So if you're going to a national park in Scotland, I would recommend going early summer, so like May or June, or late summer, like September even early October in the autumn. So that's the best time for Scotland. Uh, and the next question we have, the last question is, has it affected me in any way to see animals, rivers or vegetation disappear due to climate change? And both in the UK and across the world. Um, definitely. I mean, it's very... It's very sad to see uh, natural habitats and, um, well, animals going extinct, so animals disappearing, habitats being destroyed by climate change. Um, it's very sad to see the impact that humans have on the planet, and how this destroys not just the life of animals and environments, but the life of many people as well, uh, affected and destroyed by um, the actions of people and often by the actions of few people. So, you know, people in much richer countries who pollute more and have a negative impact on the environment. And often the people who pollute the most, they don't feel the effects of climate change. There's poorer people and people in different countries who um, feel the effect of this and who's uh, well and that's also where nature and animals are affected as well uh, so yeah it's very sad to see um, I'm trying to think if there's been an example sort of close to home for me um, I think when I was younger uh, when I was a child where I live in the countryside, I used to see a lot more animals. So different, all different kinds of animals. Uh, almost every day I would see some type of animal. Um, whereas now it's not as common. I don't know if this is because of climate change, but I, animals I used to see frequently. So foxes or badgers or deer or 
woodpecker, herons. I think I mentioned these in my presentation. Um, now you see them less often, not as frequently. So this may be because of climate change. And yes, it's sad to see because seeing animals in the wild and in their natural environment is a very special thing to see. Yeah. Um, okay, I think this is, yeah, that's the last question. So thanks for sending the questions. I'm really glad you had so many questions and I hope you liked my answers. Um, so thanks for sending the questions. If you have any more, feel free to send them. Uh, so yeah, have a great day and see you next week.